This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and earlier this week I made a post here on the channel and on Instagram asking if you had any design-related questions that you'd like answered. So in this video, I'm going to answer some of those questions. Let's get started. First question, do you think Inkscape is as good as Illustrator when it comes to making logos? Uh, yes, personally, I do think Inkscape is as good as Illustrator, or it's nearly as good at the very least. Uh, it's not quite like the comparison you'd make between GIMP and Photoshop, where as great as GIMP is, Photoshop is clearly more advanced. That's not the case with this, though. Inkscape and Illustrator are very similar. Whatever you can make in Illustrator, you can also make in Inkscape with relative ease, and vice versa, really. Once you know how one application works, you can learn the other fairly quick. Next question, your take on the dangers of over-designing versus under-designing a logo. Should cases like Nike and Apple be taken as the rule or as the exception? Uh, well, in my experience, logo design is so nuanced that you really can't make rules that apply across the board like that. The only rule really is that context is what determines everything. So if you're making a logo for a sports apparel brand like Nike, something simple tends to work well with embroidery and being visible at small sizes on a shoe or the breast of a shirt or whatnot. But if you're making uh, a logo for a hockey team, for example, you'll want to make something uh, more detailed and illustrative. So it's really something that should be taken on a case-by-case -case basis. Next question, why are you using Inkscape over Illustrator? Well, back in 2009, when I first took an interest in vector design, I couldn't really afford Illustrator, so I looked into what the alternatives were, and I started using Inkscape. And I've put so many hours into Inkscape over the years that it's to the point now where whatever I create with Illustrator, I could have created with Inkscape in far less time. I mean, I know Illustrator pretty well, but I know Inkscape like the back of my hand, so that's why I continue to use Inkscape. It just saves me time, and it's what I'm most familiar with. Is it possible to live off of graphic design and earn online? Yes, it most certainly is. Um, I've been I've been using my design skills to make money since 2011, and I've been doing it on a full time basis since 2013. And I uh, I don't see the demand for design services going away anytime soon. So I think it's a pretty good business to be in. What are the pros and cons of Inkscape and Illustrator? Good question. Well, uh, as I mentioned earlier, they're both pretty similar, but they do have certain advantages over each other. For example, it's much easier to work with text in Illustrator. Working with text in Inkscape can be a little messy sometimes. Illustrator also lets you output files with a CMYK color profile, and you will need to be able to do that if you're creating something that's going to get printed, like a brochure or a poster or something like that. Um, Inkscape doesn't have that ability just yet, although they are working on it from what I've heard. Another advantage Illustrator has is that it's the industry standard. If you know Illustrator well enough, you can get hired by a, by a studio or an agency as an Illustrator. As far as I know, there's no studios hiring designers to use Inkscape, but uh, I could be wrong. As far as Inkscape's advantages go, uh, aside from price, which is kind of obvious, I think working with gradients is much easier in Inkscape. For one, it just feels more intuitive. Um, another thing that gets overlooked about Inkscape is that it uses far less CPU resources. That means that you can run Inkscape on some really low-end consumer-grade computers. That's certainly not the case for Illustrator, though. Illustrator is a beast. Uh, I have this laptop with an i5 processor and 8 gigabytes of memory, and even that struggles with Illustrator. So if you're using a low-end machine, you'll definitely want to stick with Inkscape. Best GPU for graphic design? And best CPU, AMD Ryzen or Intel? Well, when it comes to vector design and raster design, like what you would do with Inkscape or GIMP, you really don't need a GPU for that. Whatever onboard graphics you have should work just fine. And as someone who uses a GTX 1070 myself, I haven't really noticed any difference. Same with processing, really. I mean, I use an i7-6700K, but that's mainly for video editing and rendering. I don't really think you're going to need anything spectacular for this sort of thing. Maybe a GPU would come in handy for, like, uh, 3D and animation, kind of like what you would do with Blender. But that's not really my neck of the woods, so I, I couldn't say for sure. Uh, as for AMD versus Intel, I've never used AMD personally, but I'm really intrigued by the Threadripper. But even that, that's, you know, that's more so for video editing. I, I don't think it would make much of a difference as far as basic design work goes. You should be just fine with either one, really. Can you do more Illustrator tutorials? Okay, so for those of you who may not be aware, I have a separate channel called Illustrator for Beginners where I create Illustrator tutorials. I started it about a year ago as kind of like a side project, but I've been pretty flaky about it since then. I uploaded some videos, then I stopped for a few months, then I uploaded some more, but then I stopped again. Um, 
I'd love to get back into a routine of creating them regularly, but I'm just too busy lately, especially over the past few months. I've been so buried with, with client work that I've, I've hardly had time for this channel or writing articles for my website. So I'm hoping I can get back into the swing of it once things settle down a bit, but I just, I just can't make any promises. So uh, sorry to let you down there. Can you share with us about copyright law when it comes to using Google Images? Well, I am not a lawyer or any kind of legal expert uh, when it comes to copyright law, but as a graphic designer, you do have to have some basic understanding of copyright law. Otherwise, you could get yourself and your clients into some pretty big trouble. Um, what I can tell you is that you should never use images from Google Image Search. Even if you sorted out the results so that it's only displaying images that are tagged as being labeled for reuse, you really don't know for sure if you can use it. Google is just an index of user-generated content. Anyone could steal any image they want, then upload it to their website and tag it as being okay for reuse. And when you go and find it in Google Images, you go and use it thinking it's okay, but it's really not. So. There's really no way to know for sure. So I would stay very far away from Google Images altogether. Um, for stock photos, I like to use Pixabay. The photos there are all high quality and public domain. I never had a problem with Pixabay uh, myself, so um, give them a try. If you or your client wants to buy some stock photos, then great. Otherwise, I would just stick to using a site like Pixabay. And the same goes for fonts as well, by the way. There's a lot of fonts on the internet that claim to be free, but if you read the fine print, they're only free for personal use. If you want to use them commercially, like for a client, you need to purchase a license from them. Otherwise, you can get hit with some fines, possibly a lawsuit, and nobody really wants that. Um, for fonts, I like to get my fonts from Font Squirrel. Uh, all of their fonts are 100% free for both personal and commercial use, so they're, they're pretty safe, and you can trust them. So that should do it for this week's questions. If you posted a question and I didn't get to it, I apologize. I ended up getting far more questions than I thought I would, and I, I couldn't possibly get to everyone. Uh, so uh, if you'd like, you can post it again, and maybe next time I'll get to it. Or if you have any other questions you'd like answered in a future video, go ahead and post it in the comments. Or if you're watching this on Facebook, you can leave it in the comments section there as well. And as always, thanks for watching.